pretty soon I have an opponent that as I get my grips, they know that I'm, I'm going to go to a sumigashi. Right away, they put this leg up for base. Go ahead. And now when I try to, you little yeah, now that I try to do the sweep, I'll never be able to sweep them. Now the good news about the sumigashi is that you can go either side. So a good habit to pick up is the second I see that leg goes up, I switch everything and I take them the, over, other, the opposite way. And in fact, it's a lot easier to sweep someone once this leg is up. Now, in the gi, it's a little bit ch more challenging to get perfect grips as I go. But one of the beauty things is that if it works in no gi, chances are it's gonna work in gi. So from this collar tricep, you could realistically try to get to a collar and the jacket, but let's be real, it's sometimes hard to make a precise grip. So when I do this multi-directional sumigashi, I actually go to an actual collar tie. So not her actual collar, I go to her head and I just grab the tricep here like so, okay? And I don't even worry about the jacket. I grab and I cuff the tricep. As I do this though, the same concept applies. Getting her elbow inside her shoulder and getting her head over her elbow here. And now from here, same action, I pull everything in as I look and I follow into top position here. Okay, so let's look at it again. Where we start out, same thing. At first I get off to my angle. Notice I'm not centered. I go hand over hand, start making my grips, put her hand on me, get to a tricep grip. I notice she puts a leg up. So now it doesn't make sense to try to go into that. So in one motion, my leg switches. And as I do this, I get to the head and tricep here. I'm looking at pushing that elbow and driving her head to the floor. Obviously don't do this, but think about spiking their forehead on the ground. Not that you ever will, right? But that's kind of the thought process I have as I start to elevate and you get a really nice sweep from here. When I feel the leg is up though, that's when I kind of break my rule of not extending. Because her leg is up, you're gonna have to do some extension, which will help you take them over. So here's what I mean, put this leg up. If I keep that contracted knee here, she's already really high. It's hard to get that same sweep. You can, you just have to be really patient. But because her hips are already off the ground, I generate a lot of force extending from here. And now like, I get to the top position here, okay? so. Practice that concept. Then I want the top athlete to mix it up. Sometimes post the knee, sometimes don't. That way they can get in the habit of just going and not thinking. Obviously when you're first drilling it, you're gonna have to think. But I want it to get to a point where it's like muscle memory. Cool? Three, two, one. Left shoulder, now lift your butt off the floor. Yeah, now point your belly to the ground. Yep, 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 keep going, keep going, keep going. Ah, oh, close. Better, but you're not keeping your right knee outside his body. Okay. Right? So, watch my knee, put your knee down. This knee, you're putting it inside his body. Oh. I want it to stay above him here, okay. so that as I go, post your leg. As I go, see how my knee stays above him? Now I'm able to lift my hips and follow. Okay. That's what you're missing. Thank you. Dad. Yeah. Thank you. When do we do the underhook? Okay, so anytime I get to a sumigashi, and not only is she able to post a leg, but she's able to rip her arm to the floor and out here. This is inviting me to get to an underhook. Now, we do have the option of switching to an underhook on this side or on the far side here. Okay. Now, how do I decide this? Okay. So generally, if I'm on the top side here and I get to an underhook, this doesn't really benefit me if I'm trying to sumigashi her. It does benefit me if I wanna get to a pinch headlock or a shoulder crunch, different lesson. Okay, but if I'm in the business of getting to another sumigashi, instead, this is where I'm going to punch in an underhook here. Now, as I punch in this underhook, I'm going to get to a square butterfly. So my I'm gonna use my left foot now to square up and get my second butterfly hook here. And now I'm going to get to an overhook here. Now, I don't wanna to try to sweep her from here. Okay, remember the sumigashi is always to a shoulder and angle. So I have to get back uh, to a seated stance. And the way we do this is called a forward shift, which means I pull my knees to my chest and I extend 
everything over here. No matter how strong someone is, you will always be able to hit this. Okay, so I'll show the forward shift again. After I get my underhook, after I get my overhook, I first go knees to chest as I round my spine like a banana. Then as I extend, I sit up with her. Now the second I sit up, I have to start going into my sweep. Which way? To the overhook side. Why? Because she cannot base with his hand. If I take her to the underhook, we run into the same problem, which is that post. When I go to the overhook side, I bring my, my uh, action leg to my butt. I start to look over my shoulder, but I really want, let's turn, I really want to think about is not just hugging here, because if I just hug her arm, move your hand around, she can post that hand. Okay, not saying she'll defend, but it gives her a chance. Instead, I grab the tricep and I trace the arm. Now show everybody your hand. See how much more limited her movement is? Reminds me of the scary movie too. This is my strong <laughs> hand, you know what I'm talking about? She can't really move it, okay? Now, same thing, as I look over my shoulder, I'm pulling her into me and elevating her hips. Now, even if she gets that leg up, it does her no good. I keep doing that same action leg, lifting my hips and following through. Worst case scenario, let's say we can't use that action leg and she bases out, I can instead extend my leg down to the ankle, uh, hook her, her shin ankle area, and as I lift my hook, her leg becomes weightless, allowing me to take her over and end up in a strong position, ready to start mounting. Okay, so let's look at it, the whole thing again. Let's go this angle. We had our initial sumigashi, or maybe it was the second one, that we just did, and she was able to get a hand to the floor. So I'm here, she was able to rip. From here, I get my arm under her arm as I square up and get my underhook deep. Notice the crook of my arm is behind her shoulder. I don't want a shallow underhook because now she can body lock me, which would be a very tough, unfortunate thing for her to do. So I have a deep underhook and I have an overhook just tracing the arm. Remember, we don't want to be flat. So I hit a forward shift, knees to chest, extend, uh, leg to my butt. As I look over my shoulder, I'm lifting her hips. If I can do the first sweep, great. If not, I go down towards the ankle as I lift, and I take her over, and now I get a nice reversal. All right, let's give that a shot. Three, two, one. I'll go back a step. Really exaggerate those knees to chest. Now hit a forward shift. Yeah, but try to take them further. Go back. Really, take them as far as you can. Yeah, now go back. Yeah, so after that forward shift, remember we, we want a forward shift, get seated into an angle. You hit a forward shift and then you fell back. That's not what we want. After we hit that forward shift, we want that angle so we can take them over. Try it again. From the forward shift. Yep. Knees to chest, seated, angle, fog that shoulder. Nice. Okay, much better. Only thing I'm being nitpicky about, since you're a higher belt, is trace the arm. You only have an overhook, so he's able to post his hand. Really trace that arm so he can't get the hand. Trace the hand with the overhook. Yeah, so give me your arm. So you have this. I like, I like think about grabbing his muscles and really clamping it tight so when he tries to base his hand, he can't. And you were kind of here, which has a lot of range of motion on his hand. Got okay, it. And he's got big muscles, so <laughs> it's easy to find. So try it again and just mix, mix piece them. everything together, but add that piece. Good, underhook, square butterfly, forward shift, trace that arm. Yeah, much better. See how his arm was like way more trapped? Thank you. Looks good. Nice mat. Good. Square butterfly. Forward shift. Nice mat. Really good. Uh, I'm just being nitpicky. The only thing I'll add is the same thing he did after that forward shift. Already start bringing this leg back to your butt so that you lock the motor. Wait, Matt, do it again. Fix it. 
Nice, underhook. Very nice. Forward shift. Yes! Very nice. Good job, Matt. <laughs> Guys, uh, on this forward shift, just some things I'm seeing, and this is just like very subtle, you probably wouldn't even notice, is when I forward shift, I don't want to get here to this angle here, because now when I fall to my shoulder, she can flatten me out. Okay, so take them further than you think you have to, so that you're really sitting straight, and now it's really easy to find that angle here. Like try to get this like tall, nice posture here, even maybe a little bit too far forward, so that you don't get stuck in this like like teeter totter position. Where if she's smart, she'll put her forehead in my chest, and now she takes away my ability to get off to a hip and, and shoulder. Okay, so that's the biggest thing that I'm seeing off of the forward shift. Okay, let's keep working. Three, two, one.